In this video, we want to look at some more compound inequalities, uh, but we want to look at some that are not as simple as the ones that we have seen previously. So, let's try to solve this guy. 16 is less than x plus 4, which is less than 27. Now, one of the key things that we need to uh, remember about these guys, when we have a compound inequality, you got two inequalities here in the string, you need to do this. You need to isolate the variable. And to do that, you want to keep it in the middle. Keep it in the middle. Do not try to move this x on the outside. You're going to get in trouble. Trust me on this. You may be wondering, well, how am I supposed to solve this? If I'm supposed to isolate, that means get it by itself. That's right. The problem that you may have is that you see too much of this problem at once. Uh, here, suppose I do this. If I cover up this, and I gave you the inequality, x plus 4 is less than 27, could you solve that? Sure you could. All you would have to do is subtract 4. In fact, you know what? Let's go ahead and show that. Suppose I just show minus 4 and minus 4. I think you would agree that that is a legitimate way of doing the problem. But I don't have just one inequality. I have this other side of the inequality. Well, if I have 16 is less than x plus 4, I would subtract 4 to get the x by itself. But if I subtract 4 from this side, I also have to subtract 4 from this side. So let me go ahead and do that. And what you see that we've done here is that we subtracted the same amount from all three sides of this inequality. And now let's look and see what happens once this is all done. We have 12 is less than x. Of course, these guys canceled. That was what we meant to happen. And this is less than 23. So this is just like those inequalities that we saw in the last video. Um, x is less than 23 and greater than 12. So if you were to graph this, another way of saying, or another way of talking about the solution set here, is that your solutions will be anything that's in between 12 and 23. Now, do I include 12? Uh, the answer is no. I do not include 12 because this is less than but not equal to. Do I include 23? No. For the exact same reason I didn't include 12, this is less than but not equal to. If you have your interval, or if you have your interval graphed, interval notation should be simple from here. You're going from 12 to 23, and we use parentheses here. Parentheses and not brackets because we're not including these endpoints. Okay? So, that means that any number that is between 12 and 23, not including those values, should be a solution for this original inequality. And I know what you're thinking. Uh, wait a minute, Mr. Craig. I bet these will get more difficult, right? You know what, Johnny? You're right. I, I can't let them be this simple. Let's see how much more creative we can get. Let's try this. Negative 19 is less than 2x minus 13, which is less than or equal to 41. You know what? Feel free if you want to to pause the video and try to solve this on your own, and then press play again and see how you come up with, uh, see if you, see how you compare with the answer that I get. In this compound inequality, notice that your variable stuff is in the middle. That's where it needs to stay. I already mentioned that up here, which is mentioning it again. If I were going to solve this inequality, or take the steps to get x by itself, let's start with this guy right here. 2x minus 13 less than or equal to 41. I think we would all agree that if this were a simple equation, we would add 13 to both sides, just like this. But as we saw in the last example, it's not just about doing it to two sides. You'd have to do it to all three parts 
of the inequality. So let me add 13 over here as well. So if I add 13 to one part of the inequality, I add it to the other parts as well. Now let's write the inequality that we have left. We have negative 6 is less than 2x, and that's less than or equal to 54. Well, we're almost done. Just one small step left until we have completely isolated the variable, and that is getting rid of this 2 here. Again, just like all the other inequalities and equations we've run across, use that multiplication property and divide all pieces by that coefficient. Divide by 2. So my inequality from left to right is negative 3 is less than x, and that's less than or equal to 27. Graphing this guy is um, something that should be getting pretty simple for you. Again, practice, practice, practice. So from negative 3 to 27, I know that I'm going to be including all those numbers in between. Do I get to include negative 3? No, because it's just less than but not equal to. Do I get to include 27? I've got the equal to part here, so that means I do get to include this. So this is the way the graph looks. And then we take this and we write the interval notation. So that's going to be from negative 3 to 27, parentheses on the negative 3, and a bracket on the 27. So what do you think? You solve this, you have a couple of steps to, to use, a couple of steps to do. The addition property, the multiplication property, graph what you have, and then convert that graph to interval notation. All right, let's try one final problem here in this section. This one's gonna be tricky, so watch out. How about I ask you to solve this? 15 is less than or equal to 8 minus x, which is less than or equal to 20. Again, if you want to pause it and try to work it on your own, then come back and check, go for it. Now, just like the ones we've done in the past, the first thing you want to do is to start getting the variable by itself and the best way to do that is to get rid of this 8. So I'll subtract 8 from the middle, but that means I also have to do that on the outside parts of the inequality as well. So the 8's cancel, they're additive inverses. 15 minus 8 is 7, less than or equal to negative x, which is less than or equal to 12. Don't forget that this is a negative x. If you drop the sign, the whole problem is, is changed. Now we almost have x by itself. What's the last thing I need to do to finish solving for x? And you guessed it. That's dividing by this coefficient. And what's the coefficient of negative x? It's just negative 1. So divide everything by a negative 1. And so now we have negative 7. Oh, wait a minute. Do you remember that? U divided by negative. And we talked about how if you divide both sides of an inequality by negative, the inequality symbol is going to have to change directions. And that's still going to be true for these compound inequalities. So this will no longer be less than or equal to. It's going to be greater than or equal to x. And this guy is going to switch around as well. Greater than or equal to negative 12. You've got to be able to read the inequality from left to right, and it still has to make sense. The original inequality said 15 is less than some stuff is less than 20. 15 is less than 20. Yes, that's true. Is negative 7 greater than negative 12? Yes, it is. Okay. Think of it this way. This is less debt than, or excuse me, this is more debt. Uh, you know what? They're negatives. Look at the number line. Uh, but here's, here's the thing. The way this is set up looks kind of weird. If we rearrange this and put the negative 12 in front, 
inequality symbol still needs to be still needs to be pointing towards the negative 12 so it's now less than or equal to x this symbol needs to be pointing to the x less than or equal to and the negative 7 you don't have to rewrite that but see I find it helpful to do uh, to do that just so I get the right order on my number line I'm going from negative 7 excuse me, negative 12 to negative 7 I know that x is between these two values it's larger than negative 12 less than negative 7 so my solution set will be everything that's in between these guys do I actually get to include negative 12 since this has the equal to part yes this will be included this one also has equal to so I get to include that guy as well now the last thing we need to do is convert this to interval notation from negative 12 to negative 7 and brackets on both of these guys. Why brackets? Well, they're colored in, they're filled in circles, so we are including those guys. So be careful. When you have compound inequalities or inequalities of any uh, shape or form, if you divide or multiply both sides by negative, the inequality symbol is going to have to change directions uh, like you see here.